So whether it's Russia's invasion of Ukraine, China's human rights abuses, or even American corporations weighing in on our own political policies, businesses' reputational risks are at a tipping point. Yahoo Finance Editor-in-Chief Andy Serwer spoke with Edelman CEO Richard Edelman about that and more in Davos. Take a listen. Geopolitics has emerged as the third ball that uh, businesses have to juggle, along with, you know, run a good business, and then societal issues such as diversity and inclusion, or sustainability, or reskilling. And so, of course, front and center is Ukraine. And we've seen the private sector taking the lead here, really ahead of governments in many instances, right? Well, compare it to South Africa. It took 20 years to get 200 companies out. Here, it was 10 weeks and 1,000 companies out. And it's because there was a huge expectation by both employees and customers that companies would act. In fact, in our trust study, we found that companies that got out, 31 point jump in trust, companies that stayed in, 30 point drop, 38 point drop in trust. Yeah, so how do companies you know, begin to balance it, I guess, if they have a big business in Russia? I mean, there are some instances, McDonald's may be a little bit slower, they have a lot of exposure, so that's a tough issue for them, right? Well, Andy, I think what's been clear is, you know, even McDonald's has gotten out. Um, you see uh, Allianz leaving. You know, this is a continuing process of companies uh, getting out of Russia. I think there are only something like 500 major companies left, 1,000 gone. So the change is significant because it's economic as a priority for business, 85%. But 78% say it's to do with societal issues, and then 60 say geopolitical issues in terms of order of business. Where does business stand versus governments in terms of being trusted in your survey? So business became the most trusted institution two years ago, January, and that's continued in this study. And the most important fact, though, Andy, is the gap in competence between business and government is 50 points. So when you think about why our business is being asked to do so many new things, it has everything to do with competence. They get stuff done, whereas government just leaves the ball. You know, that's not necessarily easy for CEOs, right. and never mind whether it's good or not, because someone was telling me that, yes, while government's gridlock, that means that companies have to fill the breach and start to address social issues a la Disney in Florida, and we've seen how difficult that is to navigate, right? Well, look, I think the important point is we're now at the extreme of what business can manage, mm. um, and companies are gonna have to make choices. I think you should stay in your swim lane as much as you can of what do I have comparative uh, advantage in, in knowledge on you know, supply chain with China, or I'm really good on reskilling, and don't deviate into social issues where it is going to put you in harm's way. Again, unless you're headquartered in that state where you have a reason to speak on behalf of your employees. So do CEOs say what then? We have these values because in, invariably they are going to be asked by various constituents, shareholders or employees, where do we stand on these very difficult social issues? And so how do they navigate that? I think you have to put priority on those that are directly affecting your business. Again, supply chain right. or health of your employee base. But on ones where it's a matter of personal choice, leave that for your personal politics and donations to um, senators. But your mandate as the CEO is to stand up and speak up only on those issues where you actually can add value. Yeah, I mean, should CEOs, if they have personal opinions on things, should they speak out? They should speak out as citizens, but right. they shouldn't speak out as CEOs. Right. And right. the CEO position, um, again, this remit of issues can expand beyond long length of my arm. And right. we better be careful here because there's starting to be a pushback against wokeness. Absolutely. And has there ever been a time when government was really trusted? Because oh, we don't trust government. Well, that's sort of a trope. You just kick the dog. But Andy, it was only two and a half years ago at the height of the pandemic, the government was the most trusted institution. And what was perceived is we gave you the big bazooka and then there was disappointing performance. And so, in fact, the businesses had to step in on PPE or <clears throat> taking care of their employees. And that's a different 
kind of thing. Business had its head down in the beginning of the pandemic. Just do your work, have layoffs, whatever. And increasingly business stood up and took the ball. And in terms of uh, issues like sustainability and supply chain, uh, how can businesses sort of take a stand there and garner even more trust? What's interesting is investors, which I know you speak to mostly, now care as much about ESG as they do operational performance and financial results. So it's operations, right. financial, and ESG. So if you want to be a long-term investment for um, Wall Street, you've got to be leading on ESG. And again, companies that have recognized this as a societal obligation. It's good to get for employees because you'll get the best and brightest. It's good for customers. Half the people now say I'm a belief driven buyer. I only right. buy brands from companies that stand up on these issues. And then lastly, you have the investors. Right, and final question, Richard. You mentioned employees. Um, attrition is a huge issue. Yeah. Uh, besides speaking to values, are there other ways that CEOs can gain trust of employees? I think a smart employer realizes that the pyramid used to be like this and it flipped upside down. And you've got to let the employees feel as if they have a way to speak to you, that they have a way to influence company policy, that in fact, it isn't just a top-down world anymore. That was Richard Edelman. Edelman, a CEO with Yahoo Finance Editor-in-Chief, Andy Serwer. And David, it was so interesting what he was saying there, especially when he was asked about CEOs weighing in on political and social issues and when they should speak out versus when they should speak out. And he was basically a proponent of saying it's very important for businesses to really stay in their own lane. I was shocked at that. I thought he'd say the complete opposite of that because polling has suggested that employees want their CEO to speak out and take a stance. But yes, he said stay in your lane as much as possible and speak out as a citizen, but not as a CEO. I still would have liked one more question on what do you do if you're Bob Chapek? You are in Florida. They did pass legislation that thousands of your employees are unhappy about and walking out. He was in an untenable situation, probably because his predecessor put him in that by coming out with the public statement. But it is a very difficult path to navigate. And Richard takes a survey. So he hears from thousands of CEOs and people. And I guess that is his belief at the end of the day. I don't know what I would do if I'm Bob Chapek or if you're in another situation similar. We're going to see that with abortion coming yeah. up soon. Yeah, it makes it extremely tough, right, Rochelle? I think so, because, I mean, where is that line then? If someone's speaking out as a private citizen, but they happen mm. to be the CEO, at, at what point do the lines become blurred? Obviously, people are looking at you leading this company and thinking, well, you know, if, if that's your view, should we still want to buy from you? So I, I'm not sure that being able to separate the two is, is as easy and realistic as he believes.